This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. The Lord be with you today, the 19th of June, Wednesday, and um, we come together for our time of uh, listening to God's Word, of praying together, of worshipping together. Um, today in the Church's calendar, the Anglican Church celebrates or commemorates the feast of Sadhu Sundar Singh. And we'll be hearing a bit more about him in a little while's time, an Indian saint and we'll be thinking about his ministry as well and it will be reflected in our collect. But first, let's begin with a verse of scripture that sets our hearts and our minds on worshipping our Lord together. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations and in every place incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. And Jennifer will read for us our psalm for this morning. The psalm for this morning is set, and the psalm is Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God and he will hear me in the day of my trouble I seek the Lord in the night my hand is stretched out without wearing my soul refuses to be comforted when I remember God I mourn when I meditate my spirit faints you hold my eyelids open I am so troubled that I cannot speak I consider the days of old, the years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. Then my spirit made a diligent search. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favourable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O Lord, is holy. What God is great, like our God. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep troubled. The the clouds poured out water, the skies gave forth thunder, your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind, your lightnings lighted up the world, the earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Today is the commemoration of Sadhu Sundar Singh of India who was an evangelist and a teacher of the faith. Sundar Singh was born into a wealthy Sikh family and um, 
was very, very devout and was sent to university. He had the opportunity to go to college and university to get an education. And while there, he was so angry with the Christian students who were telling others about Jesus Christ that he uh, made it his personal mission to persecute them. And in fact, he gathered all the Bibles and all the religious material that was there on campus and he made a big pile of it and set fire to it. However, Sadhu Sundar Singh also had another problem. He had no hope. And there was a point came in his life at a very young age where he pondered suicide. He tried everything possible to try and bring peace and satisfaction into his life, which was not to be. And one night he lay down and while he was lying down, he could hear the trains running up and down the railway track, which was near his house. And in that moment of desperation, he cried out to God and he said, if you are truly there and if Jesus is your son, then reveal yourself to me. Otherwise, at 4.30 in the morning, the mail train goes past here. I will throw myself under its wheels and kill myself. And that night, the Lord Jesus Christ revealed himself to Sundar Singh. And Sundar Singh became a devout follower of Jesus Christ. He was baptized into the Anglican Church at Simla in the year 1905. And there was a burning desire in his heart as he grew in his faith, he read scripture, he fellowshiped with other Christians. He had a real desire to serve the Lord and to bring Jesus to the masses of the subcontinent, the Indian subcontinent. He, he studied at the Lahore School of Divinity and where he prepared for his uh, exams in preparation for being ordained as an Anglican minister. After his ordination, he served uh, in various places. And at, this is a time at which he has a very close connection with our family because he, and I take pride in this, he studied divinity with my grandfather. They were in college together and then they served together as well for a period of time. Very close friends uh, till the end. And Sadhu Sundar Singh went around India. He had such a desire to proclaim Jesus to the masses of India but he realized that there was one obstacle to that. And that obstacle was that Christianity was seen as the religion of the Westerners. And he knew, in, in his own words, he says that if you want to preach the gospel to the Indians, you can't give it to them in a Western teacup. You've got to give it to them in an Indian bowl. And that is what he did. He went around from village to village, speaking about Jesus, preaching about Jesus. And he, in order to amalgamate himself, he didn't wear the white cassock of the Anglican minister. But what he did wear was, a, a, was an orange, a, a saffron colored robe, the robes of a sadhu or a simple devotee of Jesus. And he went around, no shoes on his feet, and he went around with this, um, with this saffron robe around his body, uh, covering his body. He had a calling throughout the Indian subcontinent and was known there. He visited England during this time. And during this time, he actually upset quite a few people because he challenged them. He challenged them upon about their way of living that denied the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he spoke about Jesus simply being the Son of God who walked about among us, died on the cross to be our Savior. Sadhu Sun Singh went back to India, but his heart lay in the Tibet steeps. He wanted to go up into the mountains 
to the Tibetan people who were largely, because of geographical and religious reasons, blocked off from the rest of the world. They were, they were locked away. And he went to the Tibetan people preaching the gospel and converting many to Christ, bringing them to, into that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The leaders of, um, of Tibet, and, and during this time he also felt very ill uh, and almost died, but he continued his work of preaching the gospel. The rulers of Tibet had him thrown out of Tibet and said that he was personal on Grata and could never visit Tibet again. But as he went about the, the, the plains of India, there was this burning desire in his heart, this calling to take the gospel to a people that had never and would never hear the gospel if someone did not take it to them. And so one day he went back to Tibet where he was preaching the gospel. Because he walked around barefoot in the snow, wherever, he was, and his feet would op often bleed because of the harsh terrain that he would have to traverse, traver traverse. And he was then known as the apostle of the bleeding feet. His last trip into Tibet, nobody knows what happened. He went missing. He was presumed murdered in April of 1929. A man who loved the people of Tibet, a man who loved Jesus Christ more and wanted the people of Tibet to know his Lord, the one who had saved him from death, literally from the physical death as well as from the spiritual death. And he was willing to lay down his life. Greater love, Jesus said, has no one than this, that they lay down their lives. And he showed that love for Jesus. He showed that love for the people of India and the people of Tibet. So today we give thanks to God for men like and women, like Sadhu Sundar Singh, who lived their lives sold out for Jesus. Preaching, teaching, discipling. We are going to hear our Bible reading now at this time. This morning the Bible reading is taken from the Old Testament from the book of Judges and I will be reading from chapter 9 beginning at verse 22 to the end of the chapter. Abimelech ruled over Israel three years and God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the leader of Shechem and the leaders of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. That the violence done to the seventy sons of Jerubal might come, and their blood be laid on Abimelech their brother, who killed them, and on the men of Shechem, who strengthened his hands to kill his brothers. And the leaders of Shechem put men in ambush against him on the mountain tops, and they robbed all who passed by them along the way, and it was told of Abimelech. And Gal, the son of Ebed, moved into Shechem with his relatives, and the leaders of Shechem put confidence in him. And they went out into the field and gathered the grapes from their vineyards and trod them and held Sorry, a festival. And they went into the house of their god, and ate and drank, and reviled Abimelech. And Gal the son of Ebed said, Who is Abimelech, and who are we of Shechem, that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jerubal? And is he, and is not Zubal, his officer? Serve the men of Hamar, the father of Shechem. But why should we serve him? Would that this people were under my hand, then I would remove Abimelech. I would say to Abimelech, Increase your army and come out. When Zubal, the ruler of the city, heard of the words of Gal, the son of Abed, his anger was kindled, and he sent messengers to Abimelech secretly, saying, 
Behold, Gal the son of Ebed and his relatives have come to Shechem, and they were stirring up the city against you. Now, therefore, go by night, you and the people who are with you, and set an ambush in the field. Then in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, rise early and rush upon the city. And when he and the people who are with him come out against you, you may do to them as your hand finds to do. So Abimelech and all the men who were with him rose up by night and set an ambush against Shechem in four companies. And Gal the son of Ebed went out and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city. And Abimelech and the people who were with him rose from the ambush. And then, and when Gal saw the people, he said to Zebal, Look, people are coming down from the mountain tops. And Zebal said to him, You mistake the shadow of the mountains for men. Gal spoke again and said, Look, people are coming down from the center of the land, and one company is coming from the direction of the diviner's oak. Then Zebal said to him, Where is your mouth now, you who said, who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Are not these the people whom you despised? Go out now and fight with them. And Gal went out at the head of the leaders of the Shechem and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many fell wounded up to the entrance of the gate. And Abimelech lived at Erumah. And Zubal drove out Gal and his relatives, so that they could not dwell at Shechem. On the following day the people went out into the field, and Abimelech was told. He took his people and divided them into three companies, and set an, em an ambush in the fields. And he looked and saw the people coming out of the city, so he rose against them and killed them. Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city, while the two companies rushed upon all who were in the field and killed them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day. He captured the city and killed the people who were in it, and he raised the city and sowed it with salt. When all the leaders of the Tower of Shechem heard of it, they entered the stronghold of the house of el Beret. Amimbelech was told that all the leaders of the Tower of Shechem were gathered together, and Abimelech went up to mountain Zalmon. He and all the people who were with him, and Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bundle of bushwood and took it up and laid it on his shoulder. And he said to the men who were with him, What you have seen me do, hurry and do as I have done. So every one of the people cut down his bundle of uh, bundle and following Abimelech put it against the stronghold and they set the stronghold on fire over them so that all the people of the Tower of Shechem also died, about 1,000 men and women. Then Abimelech went to the to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and captured it. But there was a strong tower within the city and all the men and women and all the leaders of the city fled to it and shut themselves in and they went up to the roof of the tower and Abimelech came to the tower and fought against it and drew near to the door of the tower to burn it with fire and a certain woman threw an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Then he called quickly to the young man, his armor bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, lest they say of me, A woman killed him. And his young man thrust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, everyone departed to his home. Thus God returned the evil of Abimelech, which he committed against his father in killing his seventy brothers. And God also made all the evil of the men of Shechem return on their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Zerubbabel. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Gosh, what a story that is. Um, you know, where do you even begin to get a hold of it? I want to start by only looking at two of the verses which actually tell us and hold the key to understanding what is happening here. The last two verses of our passage today of Judges chapter 9, where it says, Thus God returned the evil of Abimelech, which he committed against his father in killing his 70 brothers. And God also made all the evil of the men of Shechem return on their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbaal. Well, what this says to us, that both Abimelech and the men of Shechem, they committed evil in the eyes of the Lord. Whatever happened, whatever was done, they did not do what was right. Abimelech had his brothers killed, his 70 brothers killed, because he was afraid that one of them would rise up and claim the leadership of the clan that one of them would rise up and kill him and take his place because they were all children uh, of, uh, of his father. But now we, there is something over here that we need to realize is that in the background of all that happens in our world, of our world affairs, in the background, there is always God's hand at work. And there is always judgment upon unrighteousness. There is blessings on righteousness, but there is always judgment on unrighteousness. Abimelech comes to the, to the leadership of, his, of the clan, of the, of the nation. He, he takes over from his father. But in order to hold on to that power, he has murder committed. He, he deals deceitfully and treacherously with those who are of his blood, of his skin, because he does not want them to uh, overthrow him. He deals treacherously with the people of Shechem. He's virtually tried to kill every one of them. However, However, in the middle of it, there is one battle that takes place towards the end of his life. Well, he, he doesn't know it's the end of his life at this time. In that battle against the men of Shechem, in which he deals with them as treacherously as he did with his own brothers and sisters, seeking to annihilate them, seeking to get rid of them. The people, the men of Shechem, the leaders of the city, run into a tower. And that, the name of that stronghold, where they run into, in verse 46, all the leaders of the tower of Shechem heard what he did in Shechem, where he raised the town and he sowed it with salt so that nothing would ever grow there. It would become saline and nothing would ever be able to grow there because of the salinity. He totally made sure that he annihilated that whole community, that whole group of people. So when the leaders of the, of the Tower of Shechem hears what he, he's done, they entered the stronghold of the house of El Beret. Now, El Beret might not mean anything to us as we read it now, but actually the word El Beret means the covenant, the covenant. They entered into the stronghold of the house of the covenant. And when Abimelech goes up against them to try and destroy them, they are protected within the stronghold. It is the covenant that we speak about at this moment, the covenant that God has made with us. And for us as Christians, the covenant that God has made with us through Jesus Christ. 
and they're safe there and they're protected and and he tries his best to get to them and he tries to burn them out and you know like he's done elsewhere but there was one woman as he was trying to set the door on fire so that the people inside would not be able to get out there was one woman who took a millstone and chucked it over the edge and it hit him on the head the upper part of the millstone where, which they used to grind the, the, the flour out of the grains of wheat. And as she chucked that over, it hit him on his skull. And he was dying. He was mortally injured. <laughs> but even then, just think of the pride of the guy. He doesn't want to die at the hand of a woman. So he tells his armor bearer, the guy that was with him, he says, draw your sword and kill me. So let it not be said that the last testimony about me or mention of me in this world is that I was killed by a woman. He's dying, he's losing everything, and yet his pride is still there. Now the word of God tells us that he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. Abimelech chose to live his life by being ruthless and murderous and in the end he dies by the sword now the people of Shechem are by no means innocent in all of this they also did evil in the sight of the Lord they also uh, they, they did evil and God repays that evil he brings judgment on the men of Shechem because of what they did and because the curse of Jotham, the son of Zerubbabel. You see, when we look at what happens in the world today, and there is a lot that is happening in the world today. Some think one side's innocent, the other thinks the other side's innocent. And at, at, particularly at this time in the world where, where both Britain and America are going to elections, each uh, group of people, each one of them tries to show that they're better than the others. But let us make no mistake that the evil that men do, God visits on them. God is at, at, at work behind the scenes of our world to bring about his plans and his purposes. Let us not say that God is not interested or God's hand is not there. But let us remember that no matter what happens, no matter what the evil of any human being's heart desires, even if it's the evil of the hearts of the voters or the goodness of the heart of the voters. Mm. God is at work, working his purposes out for us. And let no one say that they can stand up against the will of the Lord and that they are mighty and powerful. Because ultimately, God resists the proud. Just like Abimelech, just like the men of Shechem, God resists the proud. But he exalts the lowly. He raises the lowly. The, uh, the psalmist says, for you, O Lord, are the shield to me, the glory and the lifter of my head. So when we walk in obedience and humility before God, He exalts us. He honors us. He lifts our head on high. But when we dare to lift our head against God and our hand against God and God's people, God deals swiftly and decisively against them. There is one thing the Lord hates. It's the one that has a haughty eye 
a proud eye, an arrogant eye. For the one that the Lord loves is the one that walks in humility before him, in obedience and in righteousness. Let's turn to our time of prayer. We begin our prayer by praying together in the words that Jesus our Saviour taught us. As we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be, be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins. sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The collect which is appointed for this day um, is the collect that is reserved for teachers of the faith, for spiritual writers, and for those who proclaim the gospel. And on this commemoration of Sadhu Sundar Singh, Almighty God, who enlightened your church by the teaching of your servant Sundar Singh, enrich it evermore with your heavenly grace and raise up faithful witnesses who by their life and teaching may proclaim the truth of your salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, today we pray for our world. And we're just minded of so many people, Lord, that we can look at on the world stage people who ruthlessly seek to grab and hold on to power and just like in the days of of the judges so too today lord there are those where we know who try to get rid of political opponents who try to imprison and kill dissidents and voices that call out against them. Father, we pray that we might have the discernment of where your hand is at work behind the scenes of our world. We think of Ukraine and Russia We have heard the stories of Putin's ruthlessness and method of dealing with opposition. Lord, we pray for the war in Ukraine that it would cease and that the lands of the Ukrainians might be vacated by the Russians and that they might be true democracy and the people allowed to return and rebuild their lives without fear of attack or harm. Father, we pray for the Russians who have lost fathers and brothers and sons. We pray that, Lord, you would bring to them peace. Heavenly Father, we pray for our nation in just over two weeks Lord we'll be at the ballot box we'll be casting our votes for the next government and for the next member of Parliament and I pray father that the campaigning throughout our land would be peaceful it would be honest and righteous we pray against mudslinging. We pray against vile language. 
we pray against words that are not true and would be like poison. We ask Heavenly Father that whoever you have chosen to form the next government, that Lord, that they might realize in humility whose servants they truly are. That they serve the nation, but they also serve you. And Father, we know that whoever uh, gets the keys to number 10, Lord, will be inheriting so many challenges within our nation. I pray that, Lord, there might be people that would turn to you for wisdom mm. and understanding. We pray that those who are elected will not be, be there to point scores, uh, to score points of one another, but rather, Lord, they might seek to be the servants of the people. Passing laws that are righteous, that are just, that are true. That reflect the righteousness of Christ rather than the wisdom of human intellect and the fallacy of science. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray, Lord, on as we think of all that is happening in the Middle East. Lord, we know that America is playing a major role and it's also the election year. So a lot of the decisions, Lord, are being affected by the ballot box or an eye on the ballot box. But Father, you have a purpose and a role for the Middle East and the countries in the Middle East. And we pray that will not the judge of all the earth do what is right. Lord, as we've read in our passage today, alliances and, and actions bring about the death and uh, humiliation of people, the destruction of land. And Father, we, we pray that we might see your hand. Lord, I pray that it wouldn't be man's selfish ambition like Abimelech wanting to rule the area but that there might truly be a laying down and a hammering out of swords into plowshares of spears into pruning hooks lord we long for that day when the lion will lie down with the lamb mm. but we know that that day only comes when your judgment has been visited upon the earth. But Lord, we pray with the Spirit and with the Bride, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Because unless you return, these days will just be prolonged and the agony of our souls and our bodies will continue. So come quickly, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are sick. We bring before you our brothers and sisters in difficult circumstances. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would Lord, minister to them. You would visit with them. You would bless them. For those, Lord, who are confined to their homes or to their beds, I pray that you would raise up those that would minister to them truly and care for them. I pray that, Lord, those whose illness is left for a short while, that you would hasten their recovery those who suffer long-term illness or conditions, you be their grace and their strength, giving them the courage to face each day. 
and for those Lord whose journey in, across earth has come is drawing to a close and who you will soon be calling home to be with you I pray that you prepare their hearts and their lives take away any fear that they might have give them the confidence that you walk through the valley of the shadow of death with them and that your rod and your staff they comfort them we pray for their loved ones that Lord they might gain and achieve strength and comfort and peace from you our Heavenly Father and that as the days so shall their strength be Lord in your mercy yeah. hear our yeah. prayer Heavenly Father, we close our time of prayer by remembering the church around the world. We know our brothers and sisters, Lord, who are suffering. And we know that for many, each day is an unknown quantity. Where they might be arrested, or they might be attacked and killed. There are others who might be reviled and mocked and made fun of. But Lord, this we know that you have promised that you will build your church and even the gates of hell will not prevail against them. And so, Lord, I pray that you give them your courage in the face of adversity, grace in the face of persecution, love when faced with hatred, so that, Lord, their lives might reflect the glory of the Son whom they serve and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and the, the love, love of God, God and, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all ever. now and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today uh, and Jenny and I will be here again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to share further with you and to enjoy the fellowship that we have. It's a joy for us to be with you. So till we meet up again tomorrow, all I can say is, is goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. And God bless you till then.